Have you thought about the judges involved in the Trump cases? You have a judge that decided that Mar-a-Lago was only worth $18 million, but he's not a judge that ever deals with real estate or corporations or business. So why did he get the case? The judge that is presiding over deciding what Donald Trump's sentence will be for these so-called indictments of hush money to Stormy Daniels. He's a family court judge, and yet he's going to decide how the rest of America is going to be able to basically vote for a presidential candidate. Not to mention, he's also the same judge that's sentencing Steve Bannon to jail. What are the odds? What are the odds? Then you think about the media in all of this, that on some things, they're very much just carrying the water and it's full-blown propaganda. Where are the investigative reporters that we used to see back in the 1970s and 80s? Nada, no more, sayonara, goodbye. And then what's really going on? Why are the people closest to Joe Biden not helping him step away? Is Jill Biden really the puppet master? Is she really behind the scenes, the de facto Presidente? Oh baby, oh baby, let's get into this. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! You can't handle the truth! Hi, I'm Pastor Marty. This is the Afternoon Drive. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Once you are, smack the bell. Click the word all. That'll get a notification of my rants, my ravings, and, of course, my undeniably flawless reasonings. Please like and share this video. That's the way that we get the word out that we're here. Welcome to the Afternoon Drive. I have been doing political commentary now. Uh, it's in excess of 12 plus years. I got started in radio on a station in Orlando, Florida. From there, it became radio and YouTube, and then just YouTube. They take my audio tracks from here, and they still put it on the radio in Orlando, but I don't actually sit physically in a radio studio in Orlando anymore. I got started in all of this because, one, I have political views uh, that were really shaped as a teenager by my father, who was an ardent conservative in the People's Republic of New York, a licensed gun dealer in New York under Mario Cuomo. That, that was a feat back in the day. But a, 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 an absolute conservative, we were a Reagan family, and in my early year years, right out of college, I was working as a salesman when one day I stumbled on this voice on the radio that was saying everything that I had been brought up to believe by my dad. And that voice's name was Rush Limbaugh. And he was the great equalizer back in the day. And of course, from uh, Rush Limbaugh, I discovered Michael Savage. Michael Savage, though there were certain days I just, uh, I just, I just didn't listen to him. The whole psychological nudity, I just love that in his opening intro. And so, you know, I tried to coin little phrases like that for my intros and things when I was on the radio. So Rush Limbaugh and Michael Savage were my two biggest influences when it came to political commentary. Well, of course, uh, Michael Savage is retired. He does do a podcast, but he was just on with Donald Trump Jr. discussing the topics I just opened with. And Donald Trump Jr. has a podcast, a weekly podcast over on Rumble called Triggered. Now this interview that he had with Michael Savage was over an hour long. I have taken about 15 or so minutes of it, and this is definitely worth your time. We heard that politics is a blood sport. We've all heard that for years. And we took it to be a, a, a figurative 
statement, a blood sport. Well, it's become a uh, literal statement that politics is a blood sport. And what they're doing to your dad, and I don't want to focus only on your father. I'm sure you'd rather talk about other things as well. But he is the canary, I'm sorry to say it, in the coal mine. They're mm -hmm. testing to see how far they can go. They've gotten this far with almost no pushback. Yeah. First with an illegitimate district attorney put in there by George Soros. Mm -hmm. Then with a judge that was handpicked when it was supposed to be random. Yeah. Juan Marchan, born in Colombia, by the way, goes to yeah. a, a who, who also gets coincidentally the Steve Bannon case in New York, uh, and another you know MAGA patriot case. Uh, it's almost as though it's a setup, Michael. It's almost as though it's a setup. I can't believe it. it. No, I'm shocked. But you know, so he goes to a fourth-rate law school, Hofstra, which is rated 160 out of 199. He's a family court judge, and now he's determining the future course of America. Mm -hmm. No, this is not fixed. This is all random. Well, it's like it's like the AG case in New York where you had a judge that had never that, that doesn't know anything about the business. It doesn't go to the commercial division that actually tries cases about the complexities of business. You stuck it in front of, you know, yet another radical sort of leftist judge that's just going to decide it as they want, not someone who actually knows anything about that. And, you know, as someone who sat for approximately 10 hours of depositions in that case, I was actually shocked that, you know, the AG and the 10 lawyers that were sitting across the table from me from their team you know, didn't have even a, a fundamental understanding of business or how things actually work in the real world. But, you know, I guess you don't have to if it's pre-rigged, right? It, it, it doesn't matter. Well, I don't think Janet Yellen could run a, a Carvel stand in Queens, personally. <laughs> but she's secretary of, isn't she secretary of the Treasury? I listen to that Yenta talk and I say, Grandma, go home and make a, a Varenica. Go yeah. make a Knish. What are you talking about the U.S. economy for? You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. See, this is the thing. When your dad ran, I was promoting him back in 16. I said, we need to elect a businessman, not a politician. I kept saying that. We, America needs a businessman, not a politician. They are career politicians. They don't know the real world. They only know how to manipulate and control the population. Now it's gotten so bad, Don, as you know better than I, you're living through it. Uh, the, the media is so nakedly against the people. And you ask how the people are ever going to get the truth if they can manipulate the fact that the president has not been all there for a very long time. He certainly is going downhill very rapidly. The dementia he is suffering from is obvious now to anybody. The king has no clothing. Even his friends on his side are saying, better get him off the stage. At the D-Day ceremony, he was held up on both sides, as I said a minute ago. Macron on one side, leaning into him, and Jill leaning into, into him on the other. It was, it was actually sad to watch. Yeah. How much longer can this charade go on is what I want to know. Well, that's, that's the thing, right? The, the Joe Biden, the mental issue, you know, it's not a matter of age. I know people, you know, significantly older than him that are totally there. I'm his uh, age. He, he, he's, yeah. I mean, <laughs> let's just say uh, that ain't a fair comparison. I mean, he's just not competent. I mean, that's right. isn't it you know, a, a national security risk at this point to have a guy like that leading our country? It has, uh, been, it I, has I, been since he was elected. <laughs> yeah. No, I, well, by the way, 100 percent. I mean, but I do think the deterioration is great. And it, but it was you're right before that. Listen to his speeches when he was either vice president under Obama and then listen to him before he, you know, even during the debates or whatever it is before he ascended to the presidency here. I mean, it's not the same guy. Uh, that's pretty clear. I mean, if you look at Trump in 1980 on Oprah talking about trade, it's the same story. He's saying the same thing, the same level of energy. Uh, you know, even if it's 40 years later, uh, that is clearly the case uh, that it's the opposite with Joe Biden. Well, I would say that the biggest of all of his scandals, the biggest scandal is what he's done to our southern border, which is erase it. I mean, everyone have to argue yep. that he's done one thing after another that would be would move up to the level of a crime against the people. Yep. But what he's done to our borders may be irreparable by anybody on Earth. You can't bring in 12 million new illegal immigrants, let that them escape of. into the country and, and find them. And, and I wrote in A Savage Republic, I called him No Borders Biden when this book was published. 
And if I may, it's one paragraph. I said, today's globalists are doing the same thing to the United States and Europe. They duped the population into supporting the, this tyrannical scheme by whipping up sympathy for the destitute migrants, many of whom are worthy of sympathy, but whom America simply cannot support in unlimited numbers. And we forget about the billions of dollars being made off the border invasion. It's not about compassion. It's about billions of dollars. And we all saw the article last week. You probably covered it mm -hmm. in the Daily Wire. Meet the NGOs facilitating mass right. migration under the banner of religion. I mean, I've been talking about Catholic charities for years. But when I saw the article about the Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society, HIAS, and that the Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas was actually one of its previous board members, I actually I said to myself, this can't be so. How can they do something as naked as this? The fact is that they're doing whatever they want without pushback for one major reason, because there is no media anymore. Sure, there are outlets like Rumble, there are podcasts, but we're smaller than the big, big mainstream media, which is like you said before, people watch it a few minutes a day. They get the images and the sound bites that the ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN people want them to see, and that's all they ever know. Well, I, I th listen, I, th I think we're growing uh, we're growing rapidly. I think some people are getting it. It's why we always encourage people to like, share, subscribe, get it out there, because we do have to compete. But, Michael, I mean, is, is another four years of this kind of invasion, I mean, I don't know that this is sustainable where we are today, right. but another four years of, of this, it seems... Uh, catastrophic, right? I mean, and it's yes. clear why they're doing it. There's money, obviously, but they're also uh, looking to replace a a voting populace that, that that they've lost elsewhere. You know, they're losing African Americans. They've already lost the Latinos. They, they they're coming up with something, and you know, hey, here, along with your beautiful ID with no other ID required, we're going to give you a social security number. And by the way, you know, you can register to vote in most places with just a social security number. Sure, you got to check that little box that says you're a citizen, but if you do it and no one's going to actually check, so you can get away with that, and you can help us manipulate an election so that we can keep you on the dole, uh, giving you government freebies paid for by the American taxpayer for eternity. Uh, that's the quid pro quo. Well, again, going back to the Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society, the article in the – who found it? It's amazing, but the Daily Signal revealed that flyers instructing migrants, illegal aliens, to, quote, vote for Biden were found at a facility – on the Mexican side of the U.S. border. How much more of a federal crime do we have to see than this? You look at Catholic Charities USA, Church World Services, Global Refuge, by the way, formerly known as the Lutheran Immigrant, Immigration or Ref, Refugee Services. They're all making billions of dollars. These are slush funds. They don't care about America. They care about power and money. And the frightening part is, is that if we still had investigative reporters on a national level, this would not be happening. I remember back in my day, there was guys like, I forget his name, Jack somebody, whatever. The people would hang on his every word. He would do a column once a week, I think, for the Chicago Tribune. Uh, gee, I wish I could remember his name. I'm pulling a Biden right now. Uh, it was a long time ago, <laughs> Jack somebody. But, okay, he was an investigative reporter. Everyone paid attention to him. There's no such thing on a national level anymore. We have stooges yeah. like Wolf Blitzer, I, I see him there and I get infuriated. I see what yeah, he's no, doing. He hasn't left country. CNN's offices in years. He's not investigating anything. He, you know, someone's coming up with something. He's reading it off a teleprompter and, you know, there's the news. Or fake crapper who's going to be moderating the debates that your dad's going to be in. Yeah. How could fake crapper be a moderator? Yeah. Now, uh, yeah, fake Jake. Uh, yeah, it's a... Uh, it, it, it's a scary prospect. And, you know, again, we, we do have to chip out, uh, chip away at it, but people have to start getting vocal about it. They got to call it out. They got to stop tuning into that nonsense. It's why, you know, again, it's why I try to do what I do here uh, to fight that. But, you know, again, it's a trillion dollar institution. You know, the mainstream media is a trillion dollar institution whose sole purpose right now is to function as the marketing department of the radical Democrats. And, and that's it's scary stuff. It has to change. But we, we got to change that collectively. Everyone has to get involved. Listen, you know, there was a fable years ago, a long time ago, called The King Has No Clothes. So one little boy says, look, mommy, the king has no clothes. And of course, hush, hush, the king has clothes. We all know Joe Biden is not there mentally. Everyone knows that. Any adult who's had an, a, a mother or a father go into a, a, a nursing home has seen the sadness of dementia. 
we know that it goes like this. It doesn't go like that. There's no recovering from dementia. And I've seen the decline go like this. Then he goes up when they put him on hippo colostrum for some of his speeches. They get a special colostrum out of Africa, probably, which gives him some mental acuity for 10 minutes at a time. And then he goes down. But seriously, not making a mockery of it. You know, people generally go like this. He's just taken a nosedive. And we saw it most recently last week at the D-Day ceremonies when he tried to sit on an invisible chair. Jill had to put him, pull him back when he tried to leave the the stage. Well, he walked and, away from veterans without greeting them. He just left. It, I, I mean, it's uh, it, it, it's it's scary stuff because what I guess what I what everyone should want to know is then, hey, clearly he's not the person making any of these decisions. So who is Jill? Right? I, I, I remember I, you know they, they, these people talk about uh, you know duly elected president, democracy. You know, it's a soundbite for them. It's just a joke at their cocktail party. So who's the person actually making these decisions? Jill. I uh, did a podcast about three months ago where I said, is Jill Biden Mrs. President? It wouldn't be unprecedented. There's a case in the, I forget, again, I don't know the exact president, but he became sick, had to leave office, was hospitalized, and his wife literally was running the country. She was actually signing papers with his name. She was the acting president. I think Jill is doing it. And and Jill is certainly looking like a woman in charge, isn't she? Doesn't she look like she's in control? I think w- without him, I mean, she's the person that should be uh, perhaps most chastised for allowing this sort of elder abuse uh, to continue. But yeah, she, she's she's certainly there, and he, he's incapable of giving a public speech without her because you know she does have to hold him up and show him how to get off the stage. Uh, and it's you know it, it should be a national embarrassment. I know if it was my father and that was Melania doing it, uh, again the press would have something to say about it. But it's just <laughs> no, she's just a doting wife doing a great job. It's 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 insane. Well, she whispered to him like this. You could see like a puppeteer. It was like Paul Winchell and Charlie McCarthy. Charlie was starting to do something, and you see a go like this. Yeah. It's it's so naked. It's astounding. But just think about this. Let's say, God forbid, he can't even get up in the morning anymore, he, and he really reaches that point in the next month. It could happen. As I say, we're seeing the decline like this. It could be a crash dive virtually any week now. Yeah. Uh, you know, I used to be in the Alzheimer's research world. Not the world's expert, but I wrote a book years ago called Reducing the Risk of Alzheimer's. I've studied scans, PET scans at the time of brains, and I've seen people decline, and they decline rapidly by the way. Once they go to a certain point, they don't, as I say, they don't pop back and they don't stay on a plateau. So let's say, he, God forbid, they, he, they can't even fake it anymore. So who's the president? Kamala Harris? Think about that, Don. Yeah, I, I actually don't think the Democrats would allow that. I think she's actually arguably uh, worse. Because, you know, you, you hear one of her sort of word salad speeches and it's just like, man, it's like I literally there's times I hear Kamala Harris speak and I'm convinced that like her speechwriter is like closet MAGA uh, because like no, no, no one would put those words in a paragraph and let someone deliver them like if they were actually the home team. I think they I think they're basically uh, a plant. Because uh, I think she's worse. I think the Democrats recognize it. I think the reality, you know, they'll they'll do their best. They'll try to run Joe. He's a nice guy, old, old guy, right? He he's not charged, not because he didn't do a crime by by his own DOJ, but he, in their words, essentially, he's not competent to stand trial. But but he can actually control the nuclear football. Uh, the the mental gymnastics it requires to come to that kind of conclusion um, is is truly special, but should not surprise anyone who's been watching. Well, how about the war against Russia, which has escalated yeah. with whoever's running Joe saying to uh, Zelensky, the new Napoleon, yes, you can take our weapons, our most advanced weapons, and now use them against Russia on Russian territory. But wait, we're not saying attack Moscow. No, no, don't fire them at Moscow, says the great Lord Austin, not Lloyd Austin. Yeah. Lord Austin says, oh, we said, yeah, you can use them against Russians who were shooting at well, you. Well, we but- did it. Last week was the first time. I mean, U.S. weapons actually were used and hit Russian right. targets. I mean, you know, they only, what, they control 6,400 and something uh, nuclear warheads. Like, I don't know. Seems like something maybe we wouldn't want to provoke to, you know, to help, you know, the new deity of the left, Vladimir Zelensky, in what was once the most, maybe arguably the most corrupt nation in the world, Ukraine. But now, now they are beyond reproach. Now they are, uh, it, it's it's nuts. I, I still don't understand, other than money, obviously. Uh, yeah. But, you know, what are America's interests in all of this? And, you know, I can't come up with any, but, you know, in D.C., money is a big one. 
Well, obviously, we're protecting the borders of Ukraine because we care so much about borders. <laughs> and, and obviously, we're protecting the democracy in Ukraine because we care so much about democracy, even though it's a total dictatorship where he suspended elections, jailed his opponents, eliminated all opposition media. But that's the democracy we're spending hundreds of billions of dollars on and not one word from Wolf Blitzer. And I'm going to use him now as the factotum when we say media. It's yeah. Wolf Blitzer, who's been there as long as Joe Biden putting out one lie after another, the, the, the so-called white-bearded Jewish grandfather, Wolf Blitzer, the nice guy. Well, he isn't a nice guy. He is one of the reasons the country is in decline is because he's a paid liar for the opposition to American values. But he's not alone. So we can, we can scream all we want. Mm -hmm. We're not changing a thing. And who are we awakening? How am I going to awaken my neighbor when... I walk around a, a white suburban neighborhood and I see people don't even know what's going on outside their own doors. You know, I had my flag up when your father was uh, indicted by the fake judge. I put the flag upside down on the front of my house, flag in distress. So I kind of wanted to see what would happen in this white suburban neighborhood. No one even noticed the flag was upside down. I saw people walking their dogs go by. They didn't even look at well, the flag. You're Bay Area, right? So that doesn't surprise me. No, if if you were flying the Chinese communist flag upside down, they'd know it and they'd chastise you greatly. If I had hung the gay flag upside, the pride flag upside down, they would have burned my house down. <laughs> yeah. It, it, that calls for murder. Your, your hanging <laughs> the flag was an act of violence, Michael. You, you literally threatened their lives. Uh, no, but I did. I hung it upside down, a flag in distress. Not one person said a word.